Hi, welcome to my latest video. For this project, I'm back with fishing floats, and rather new bolster. I'm using some reed that I collected from the local lake last winter. The rest of the materials for the project, I'll post the PDF online. Most of them have been bought from supermarkets, some of them are specialist items, but I'll also see if I can put some suppliers' names up there. Enjoy the film. The first job is really to sort through the reed stems. What I'm looking for is a solid section, but also something that's thick enough to give me a bit of wear. To cut the reeds, I'm going to do it here on the joints uh, where the wall's thickest, rather in the middle here where it's thin. And I'm using a, a backed razor blade, but probably a craft knife would be as well, if not better. I'm just going to score, and then hopefully adding a bit of pressure, it'll just split it. For the other end, or the length, I'm just going to cut at the next joint. Once I've cut my reed to length, I can use just an ordinary pencil sharpener to rough out a shape on the end. I don't want a straight tape out. What I'm looking to do is just move the reed about until I get a kind of dome shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just, just rough at the moment. Then I can take a bit of coarse sandpaper, this is a hundred grit. Now first of all, just flatten the end off, um, so it makes a nice joint with the with the tip. Then I can pinch the sandpaper together and just refine that dome a bit. And again, I'm kind of doing it in a random fashion. It seems to work best if I don't try and second guess it. Once that's complete, just in case of turning it round and repeating the same on the other end. When I finish with the sandpaper, I'm left with two ends, one's solid and the other end is hollow. It's into that hollow end, I'm just going to stick a, a stem. Uh, for that, I'm using a bamboo skewer, I think this was 99 pence for a packet lifetime supply. Sliding it in, I can feel that it's, it's not quite tight and I'm going to have to pad that out a bit. But first I need to cut the skewer down, just so it's a bit more manageable. Just a case of scoring around and then hopefully just snapping it in two. I'm using to pad it out some polyester thread. Again, I bought this from a supermarket, just ordinary sewing thread uh, in one of my homemade uh, bobbin holders. So I'm gonna put some wraps up and then just double back over them to secure it in place. Hang on, there we go. And give it a little test before I tie off just to see if it's fit it fits properly. I don't want it over tight, I don't want it to split the reed, but that feels fine. So I can finish with a a fly tie and hitch type knot. <laughs> and then just trim the thread back with a razor blade. Drop me Bobby. And also just neaten up. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's been buried inside the float, but there you go. To stick it into position, I'm using a bit of super glue, my favourite adhesive. And then it just slides in. I can feel that it's a really tight fit. Give it a second just to, to set up a bit. And then I'm going to give it a roll and just see if it anything sticks out. You can see the end there is just a bit out. I can just adjust that by pressing it with my fingers. For the other end, what I'm using is the pointed end of the bamboo skewer. I'm just going to pierce there. And that feels quite a tight fit without any anything added. So again, score it. Just snap a piece off. I'm back with the super glue, I'm just going to glue this straight in. And again, that feels okay. And again, just give it a roll and check that I've got everything lined up. That seems pretty okay.
with both stems in position it's looking really like a proper float. I'm going to attach an eye to this end but it's probably just a touch too long so I need to trim that down. Again I'm just going to score. And then snap off the bit I don't need. To start the thread off I'm going to put a nick in the end. That's probably a little more than I wanted. So I'm back with my polyester thread and I'm just going to trap that in that gap there. I just check that it's tight and that feels secure. I can trim that back then with my razor blade. And just for the moment I'm going to put that to one side while I sort out the eye. I'm using some stainless steel wire and a jig and this is basically a, a scrap of wood with two panel pins nailed through the back. The wire is stainless steel florist wire and the great thing about this is although it's thin it doesn't have any memory so if I bend it it stays in position. I'm going to cut a, a section off probably a lot more than I need. I generally make a few eyes together rather than one. So to use the jig I'm going to trap some wire and then just literally wrap it. So it's a double wrap around each end. Once I've run out of wire, I can just cut off one of the eyes. And then I'm going to trim that so it's so both um, ends are, are of equal length. Just looks a bit neater on the float. With the eye complete, I can get the reed back. And I'm just going to hold it in position and then secure it with one of these um, small pegs I found at a craft shop. Just need to straighten up and check everything's okay before I start to wind. And I'm going to pull off some of the polyester thread quite a bit and hang it over the edge of the table. And I can start winding. The only real trick I've found here is to actually let the, the line do the work. So by slowly rotating and just adjusting the angle, it should almost wrap itself up. And then when I've got a few turns on and the eye is kind of secure, I can take away the peg and just continue up the stem. I kind of hold it in different positions, but this is probably the easiest way I've found to start with. The next most difficult bit actually is getting it over the dome, and it's really a case I've found of just changing my angle. And this is where really the roughness of the sandpaper, it's coarsened up that, and really gives some grip to the line. I'm just going to pull off some more thread. I've gone past the edge of that dome a little. I'm going to use a piece of thread. I mean, this is just a contrasting colour, just to make it more visible. But it's a loop of thread, and I'm just going to put it into the wraps and give it about three or four turns around to hold that in position. Then I'm going to cut my line again and drop my body and thread my tag end through that loop. It's really, really then just a case of tightening up the loop and tightening up the tag end. I want a bit of tension on both really. Once I'm happy with that, I can just pull the loop through and the line should follow. And it's just a case of coming back with my knife and just trimming that tab end off.
To finish the whipping, I'm just using the back of the blade as a kind of burnishing tool just to push anything together. Then I'm going to take a lighter and just nap. Let's just burn off all the loose bits of thread. It just singes them back basically. Then it's a drop of super glue. And I'm doing it on the kind of critical point, so on the end uh, where the wire pokes at the sides, at the base of the dough, and then at the end. I don't want to put a huge amount on, otherwise it just turns into a bit of a white mess. So I can take another um, skewer and just rub that in. The other end is virtually the same. Um, I'm just going to get my bobbin back. The only real difference is instead of starting with a with a split, I'm going to wrap up and then just double back over that thread just to lock it in position. Once I get a few wraps on, again, take my blade, just cut off the excess. Pull off a bit more thread actually and then it's just a case of repeating the whipping finishing again burnishing and then gluing for the end piece I'm using some of this um, flight iron thread this is a thread rather than a floss so it's round and I'm gonna start probably about an inch up I can trim this later but I'm doing exactly the same thing wrapping and then work my way back down. When I've finished my whipping I've added quite a bit of super glue here, a little tiny bit here, but I've also left this gap which helps me when I'm fishing. I just need to chop off the end here now. To finish the floats I'm using cellulose dough. This is normally used for coating model aircraft or model boats and it gives a really waterproof durable finish. To prepare the float, I've just gone really back over the whippings with the burnishing tool and just checked everything's neat and tidy before I go coating it. I'm going to be dipping this in the dough, so I'm going to use a paper clip as a kind of handle and hook. So if I just open it out and then make an eye, as I say when I drop it into the dough, it's not going to come off the, eye, or the hook. To dip it into the dough, I'm just going to go really slowly. It's the only kind of successful way I've found of avoiding bubbles. And on the first dip, generally, I leave it in for a minute or two just to let any bubbles come out. Then again, I can bring it out, but incredibly slowly. And what this should mean is most of the um, dough will run off. It'll just leave me drips at the end. I know I'll come out too fast if it's running. Then I can just hang the float up by the hook and leave it to dry while I do one of the other floats that I've made. The float really feels dry to the touch now. I've just found a bit of a bubble there and I'm going to sand that off with a bit of fine sandpaper. And then it's just repeat the process. Dip, leave to drip. And on this dip, what I'm going to do is just remove the little drip at the end when it's uh, halfway dry. So the float's finished, done about six dips. Everything feels smooth. And it's really time to just to get my collection of floats together and get out and do some fishing.
luckily when I got the float home it was quite easy to repair I just put a couple of drops of super glue on and then gave it a couple more coatings and it'll live to fight another day if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more you can click on the link to subscribe or leave a comment like or even share thanks for watching